type in what the equation is just by looking at the data, not even looking at the subquant. So we want to make a shot at it. Okay, you got the four and the one. Now, do you remember, Genesis, were you here in the last class? Uh, type a Y if you were here, or type an N if you were not here in the last class, please. Okay, so if you were here in the last class, you should be able to express 4 comma 1 as an equation. It's a seg, so it's 4, there you go. Thanks, Mathicus. It's 4x plus 1. And you can see this just by looking at it. Now, I've taken, uh, I took a 8th uh, grader, pulled him aside, and I just was playing with him, asking him, after we did the subquan, and after we did a little bit of looking at the, at the, uh, at how you could see the subquan in the in the data, and every linear example I could come up with, they could tell me the equation just by looking at the data. I just gave them, and I taught ninth grade and tenth grade and eleventh grade uh, algebra when I first came out to research what the problem was with math in schools in two thousand. And it was amazing how many students struggled with just looking at the data. I mean, the numbers just made them. And, and the sad part about this is, these are the numbers of everyday life. These are the numbers that, in payments, when you create a budget, this is the linear equations are the number one financial equation used in budgets. You take your monthly expenses, you take and you take your monthly income, and you subtract the two. And most of them are fixed, meaning they're very, you know, they're very linear. You could predict three months, it'll be three times what it was for one month. You know, like your mortgages, uh, your rent usually is that way. Car payments are that way. And so this is a very fundamental idea of looking at your numbers and being able to predict the future. And am I going to have money or not? Can I afford this? And it was amazing how many kids simply did not do this. And they couldn't even see it in their own numbers. So let me put up a, a little harder one just so we can move out of the linear because the linear is actually so easy you can, you can see it. It doesn't take a lot of... I will put in a tricky one. I don't look at the screen. Please don't look at the, the subquan meta pattern. I'll turn them all over if you... Keep looking. So just look at the chat. Look at the chat. Are you ready? I want you to type in the difference and then remove the difference and tell me what's left over. And then put it into an equation. Waiting for that to get out on the chat. Here we go. There's your data. Look at the differences. Remove the difference. There you go, ice guy. Now put it in into an equation. You've got the subquant, 5 comma negative 3. Put it into the equation. This, this is really easy. Now, the thing that, that, that we believe kids really like about this is they already can see it. Now look up at the board, and it's so easy to see the five segs minus three. Their confidence, when you start graphing and stuff, it's like they already know what they're looking for. They already understand it. So they're not trying to comprehend the number or the meta pattern. They're trying to understand the application. Uta, can I get my slide up there? Please. Is she still here? She controls. The yeah, slide. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> It'll take me just a sec to get there, though. I have to go through a few. Now, I had really wanted 
And I apologize. There was so much innovation that we were trying to dump into this show that I ran out of time to prepare some more examples. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> Just waiting for it to res. Well, I don't know. I'd imagine most of you are kids to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a creepy way, though, really. Not in a creepy way. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, type in a Y when you can see the uh, uh, presentation board over presentation on the, left board the stage. On yeah. the left. Because some, some some people take a long time to res, and I don't mind the, waiting 20 seconds for you to res. Okay, um, I've not got Ys from everybody. I think there's one more Y I'm expecting. There we go. There. And so now that this is res, here is a common problem. This is a really nice, simple, very easy to understand uh, physics problem. You've got a little creature you've never seen before. It comes flying by your screen. And you said, wow, that thing was moving fast. And somebody says, how fast was it moving? Now, that would be the question. It's like, can we beat it to some location? Uh, are we going to be able to? Or It's like in real life, is the cancer growing too fast for the treatment? Am I going too fast to stop on a wet road? So the application of speed is very, very necessary to life. So here... We now capture it with time stamping and second life's cool camera we got. And it dumps out the data that we measured on that stick behind it by the nose, right where the nose is going. And we saw at six seconds it was at 27, at seven seconds at 31, at eight seconds 35, at nine seconds 39. So who can tell me what the equation is of the speed? It's a set of tables. What do we do? We take the difference. Remove the difference and see what's left over. Everybody in the class should be able to do this. So do it. And this is the very first day in an algebra class that I'd have the kids deriving the equations. Maybe the first week. They'd be deriving the equations from raw data. Can somebody type up what the equation is? What's the difference? And if, you, if I need to cheat, I can stick it on the board. <laughs> if you need to see the same data, so don't look at the board, but I'll show you the same data in your chat. Okay, here it is. Look in your chat. There's that same data. 627, 731, 835, 939. Yeah. I mean, you got to admit, this is really cool stuff. Because if you've been here from the very beginning, I would have just showed you from numbers, and all of a sudden now I am having you just look at raw data, and you're telling me the linear equations. And it makes sense because you saw the meta patterns behind it. You saw the subquants, which made sense because you saw the numbers. When I put 27 feet, and I thought about making a picture of the images of feet, and putting 27 feet onto the images and putting them in a base six container. And then you'd see the 31 feet in a base seven container. And I don't know, that was a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna take you up a little. Now we're gonna get into a little, that foundation of calculus is what we're gonna to touch right now. Uh, we're here, we don't know it, but we're here. Differences in derivative are linearly linked. I mean, there's an extremely high correlation. In fact, I think it's even higher than what we do with floating point stuff, but that's my opinion. Uh, let's put our very first quadratic equation on the board. Everybody should, should be familiar with this one. This is the 
Watch, let me put it into 3D so it jumps out to you. This is a square equation. We have a cube equation, we had a seg equation, now we're doing a square equation, which for some reason we call it a quadratic, but it's okay. But it's a square equation. Kids will get it a lot easier if you call it square. Anyway, it's a square equation. And look at the data, and let's look at the difference. And we see the difference keeps changing. It's 5, then it's 7, then it's 9. In fact, if I look at the difference, All right, if I look at the differences, so I can dump it out into chat for you. Get the right number in there. Nope, that was the wrong one, my bad. Ignore that data. I was trying to be clever and I clevered myself. Nope, wrong data still. Third time's a charm. Nope, okay. Ignore all the data. Cooper's doing all the wrong stuff. Okay, so the first difference was five, seven. I ought to put that one back up there. Uh, let me get the data back up there so it's recent in chat for you, and we'll just do it in our heads. This is where this is one of the slides I wanted. Okay, first difference is five. Nine minus four is five. Next one is seven. Next one is nine. Next one's eleven. So that didn't give us to a constant. So we don't have a seg equation. When we take the second difference, what do we get? In other words, what's the difference of the seven and five? And at this point, I think I'm going to go to the spreadsheet so you can see this. Uh, so if you go into your, your um, whatever that's called, the Google Doc that I have on there, I'm going to put this data in the Google Doc. And we're going to start looking at this data. And let, let's go through the Google Doc real quick. Oh, wait, let me pull up the Google Doc. It's right here. How many of you have a viewer? How many are going to be looking at this in the in Second Life, and how many are going to be going on the screen? Because if everybody's on the on the media prim, uh, it's an excellent choice. It's like, why do we have it in Second Life if we can't use it in Second Life? Okay, there we go. There's the media prim. Okay, it's on the media prim. Let me know when it's rezzed for you, for you media prim fans out there. I'm on page one called the input screen for the media prim. And what that allows me to do is it allows me, well, no, don't, don't be going changing out on people. Um, it allows me to Determine whether the input's going to be a manual set of data, or I'm going to enter each ordered pair manually, or do I want it to be an equation? If I want it to be an equation, I enter the subquan right there in the coefficients. I enter the coefficients. We already know the coefficients and the subquan are the same thing. So I can enter the coefficients. I can even put the step size. And you can see, let's go to the next page. So on the next page, the differences. And I don't know, will you all track? If, if I go to the differences, will you see it? Let me know if you see a no. new page. No, I, I don't believe know we it, each have to click the difference I don't know. I don't think you do on this page. I don't think you do. I think it's just on media print. Are you, are you looking at the differences right now? Uh, it's No, it's loading for me. Because okay, I'm still staring at input. Yeah, it's and still great on, for me. 
Okay. Well, it hasn't changed at all for me. Yeah.